Roger that. Yo, what's up you guys? My name is Manali and welcome back to the thought process. Today, I'd like to talk about the fact that, oh my god, they found seven exoplanets around a dwarf star. Holy Mercury, take the wheel. If you aren't excited about this, well you should be because guess what? Don't do this. I'm gonna do this. Don't do this right now. It's already done. Science rules! Bill Nye the Science Guy. This episode, I want to talk about two things. The first, the actual discovery itself. And the second, the idea of aliens existing. What do these aliens look like? Would they be intelligent? And what do we know right now about extraterrestrial life forms? So the first, the discovery. NASA's Spitzer Telescope found seven, not one, seven exoplanets around an ultra-cool dwarf star known as Trappist-1. Three of these planets not one. Three of these planets are in the habitable zone. For those of you that don't know, the habitable zone is basically the orbital region that is not too close or not too far from the star for liquid water and chemicals such as oxygen, methane, and ozone to actually exist. Also, all seven of these planets are so close to this dwarf star that if you stand on the surface of one of these planets, you could probably look up into the sky and see the geological features of the other planet. Basically, it's like standing near the CN Tower in the TO looking up and looking at Mars. How cool would that be? Another really cool factor about this is that they orbit this star at a really, really fast pace. So whereas it takes Earth 365 days to make its way around the sun, it would take what some of these planets only like a day or a day and a half to orbit around TRAPPIST-1. So let's go over the really cool facts about this system. The first, it is an ultra cool dwarf star so it is much smaller than the sun. Second, there are seven planets and each of these planets is about the same size of the Earth. And third, three of these planets are in the habitable zone, oh my god aliens. The unfortunate thing is that it is 40 light years away. Actually, it's not so unfortunate because it is much closer than some of the other systems that we have tried to look for. But, I mean, 40 light years. You can't get to that, at least not in our lifetime. Although you can't send satellites and probes to the system right now, NASA has developed the James Webb Telescope, which in 2018 will search for chemical fingerprints of water, methane, oxygen, and ozone. Of basically all the type of stuff that makes Earth Earth and all the type of stuff that lets us survive on Earth. So what does this all mean? Why are we constantly trying to search for exoplanets and different planetary systems and whatnot? Why are we trying to constantly expand our horizons? Well, because we are one species on one planet going around one star in one system in one galaxy. The universe made up of thousands and millions of galaxies is constantly expanding and it is vast. To think that we are the only planet that can sustain life in a measly little habitable zone is extremely naive. Which brings me to the second part of this episode. Aliens. For right now we can only look to one species that could exist on exoplanets and that is bacteria. This is because bacteria has this ability to sustain in really really harsh conditions. Some bacteria can do without oxygen and some can live in very ammonia rich environments. These are really 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 dangerous conditions for something like humans or dogs or cats or whatever. But bacteria, they can sustain this. So if you look at different planets in our solar system, well for one we could look at Mars. Mars does have evidence of there being water, but because it traveled so far and Mars is way too unpredictable, it is constantly changing, its tectonic plates are constantly moving. The second we could look to are two moons, these are Europa and Enclidius. Europa orbits Jupiter and Enclidius orbits Saturn. Both of these moons are covered with a really really cool layer of this really cool substance known as ice. Ice is basically just frozen water. I know, it's mind blowing, I know. This could mean that underneath this ice there could be an aquatic environment that allows aquatic bacteria or I don't know, maybe even like Jupiter fish or something to exist. The fact of the matter is bacteria, I mean, it'd be cool if they exist for sure but we can't really talk to them. We need intelligent civilization to exist in order to send out and receive radio frequencies that we are constantly sending out. So, intelligent civilization, how many could exist? Dr. Frank Drake developed this Drake equation which basically hypothesizes how many civilization could be out there. Right now the number is like 10,000, but again, 
this is an estimate. The variables of the Drake equation basically have to do with how many exoplanets are out there and how many of these exoplanets may have intelligent civilization that are able to send out electromagnetic radiation. Again though, this Drake equation is just an estimate. We can't test this out yet. This is why this part of the episode is a bit more abstract. What gets even more abstract is what would these aliens look like? We can turn to the theory of evolution to try and dissect this. In the most simplest explanation, the theory of evolution is two things, survival of the fittest and reproductive success. One trait that has been successful in every species is the structure of the DNA. This double helix loop, initially discovered by Rosalind Franklin and then further developed by Watson and Crick, wasn't synthesized by like molecular biologists or something. It happened when the universe exploded. Then carbon atoms and other molecular atoms came together to make these nucleotides. These four pairs then came together to make our DNA structure, which has been successful in generations. If it wasn't successful, it would have died off a long time ago and then well, I wouldn't be here today, you wouldn't be here today, your dog or cat or whatever would not be here today. What this can tell us is that extraterrestrial life may have the same DNA structure. You know that movie Avatar, which is basically Pocahontas 2.0? Well, I know it's fictional, but James Cameron really didn't get the science totally wrong, I would say. It could be possible that a lot of the extraterrestrial life could look like life on Earth because, well, this is what was most successful in the environment. So it all depends on the planetary environment. Can I just say, if E.T. do exist, I really hope they look like more like the Navi than the E.T. in that movie, that really, really old movie. Cause that'd be so cool, big giant blue dudes. Like, whoa. Like I said, this is all theorizing and hypothesizing. And I'm sure if you read some of the literature out there, you will find thousands of theories and hypotheses that have to do with the same thing. This is why science is so cool, guys. Like, you have the theory of evolution, you have quantum mechanic theory, you have string theory, you have everything. So I really encourage you to go out there and explore these different scientific topics. And if exoplanets and aliens aren't your thing, that's fine. I personally really like to read different psychology, biology, and physics articles. Me and physics kind of have a rough relationship. I like it, it doesn't like me, but that's fine. Anyways, that's all for me. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna make a new video next Sunday and it'd be cool to see you there. Other than that, be sure to like and share this video and check out my social media links down below. My name is Manali, this has been a thought process. Stay thoughtful and go explore the wonders of science! Bye! <laughs>